So I decided to do the opposite books tag. And in the spirit of things, what's more opposite than laying down, right? What? What's more opposite than standing up? Laying down, right? So that's what this video is going to be. Coming at you live from my bed. Well, not live. I mean, by the time you watch this, it'll have been edited, you know, and such. But right now it's live. I'm alive filming this video. Opposite of standing. The camera's probably going to be a little shakier than usual. Anyway! <coughs> anyway. So the first one on the opposites book tag is the first book in your collection versus the newest book in your collection. Bear with me, I have to move. So the first book in my collection that I can recall is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. The newest book in my collection, in other words, the book I just bought, like, yesterday, Wither by Lauren DeStefano. DeStefano? Don't know. Every time I hear Stefano, it makes me think of a series of unfortunate events and how unfortunate that particular event was. Rest in peace, Uncle Monty. Cheap book versus expensive book. So cheap book would be Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen because I got it for free at an actual bookstore. Doesn't get cheaper than free. For expensive, I chose Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Is this upside down? No. I got confused. <laughs> While it wasn't particularly expensive, it was the most I'd paid for a book in a couple of weeks, so... I just bought this a couple days ago. Because look, guys! She signed it! <laughs> Next up is male protagonist versus female protagonist. For male protagonist, I chose Harry Potter and Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban because as you can see I'm currently reading it and he was the male protagonist on my mind. My boo boo. And for female protagonist I chose, it was upside down, Maggie from Inkheart because I love Inkheart and again I'm currently reading it so it was close to me. I'm lazy. Next one is a book that you read fast and a book that you read slow. So for fast, I chose Midwinter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick because this book took me less than a day to read. It was fan-freaking-tastic. You should read it. For a book that I read too slow, I picked Scarlet. You have to look at the spine because I have it naked. I actually was given this and it didn't have a dust jacket. But I chose Scarlet by Alexandra Ripley and it is what I believe is the unofficial or maybe it is the official sequel to Gone with the Wind. It took me forever to read because I was like 10 and that's a freaking lot of material for a 10 year old to try to read. Just saying. The next one is Pretty Cover versus Ugly Cover. For Pretty Cover I chose Book 2 in the Eternal Ones duology by Kirsten Miller because this cover is absolutely gorgeous. For ugly cover, I chose Book One, The Eternal Ones by Kirsten Miller. Book One's cover is horrendous compared to Book Two and I don't understand why they thought this was, I hit myself in the glasses. Mm. But yeah, why they thought this was a good idea versus this, this is beautiful. Now the paperback of The Eternal Ones is really pretty and it matches the hardcover second one but for whatever reason that never got put in a hardcover format. So the next one is a book that is national versus international and I think it means national being where you live like something that takes place where you live and then obviously something that takes place outside of where you live. So I chose Beautiful Creatures because it takes place in South Carolina. 
I do not live in South Carolina, but I do live in the United States, which this is one of the 50 states. So this was my choice. For international, I chose Les Miserables, because look at it. It takes place in France, the title's in French, and it was written by a Frenchman during the French Revolutionary War. Doesn't get more international than not America. Next is a thin book and a thick book. So for a thin book, I chose Trickster by Alethea Contis because as you can see, it's very thin. And for thick book, doo -doo -doo -doo, I chose Song of Sparrows by Lisa Ann Sandel. I adore this book. It's also a really pretty cover. It's also not the thickest book I own, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this book and this is the only way I could fit it in. I'm sorry, Mom. The next one is Too Much Romance versus Too Much Action. So for Too Much Romance, I chose uh, Rules of Attraction by Simone Alcalaz. And it's not that it necessarily had too much romance. It's that I didn't enjoy the romance. Not as much as I liked the first book. Because this is book two, by the way. The first book is called Perfect Chemistry. I really liked that one. But I'm not a big fan of the story, I guess. I don't even know. I guess I'm just not a big fan of the story as much as I was of the first one. I don't know. But that's what I chose for Too Much Romance. And it's like I said, not that they had too much of it. It's just that I wasn't a big fan of it. And for Too Much Action, I chose Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. Book 3 in The Hunger Games. You want to know why? Because there were so many parts in this book that I had to stop and go back a couple of pages to make sure what I had just read actually happened. Because it's so fast paced that you kind of lose track of what's going on. That's my only complaint with Mockingjay. That and I mean like, all my friends are dead. The name of Katniss Everdeen's biography. <sighs> hey, I want to write Katniss's biography now and call it All My Friends Are Dead. And we have reached the finale, the final one. I'm good with words. For a book that made me happy versus a book that made me sad. I will not be presenting them because they are behind me and I don't want to get up. Because I'm lazy. Sorry. A book that made me happy, or at least 98% happy, with the exception of, like, the last couple of chapters before the last chapter, which would be Outlander. <sighs> Raise your hand if you're surprised. Outlander is the book that made me the most happy. I love that book so much. Such a good story. So happy when I was reading it because everything I wanted to happen happened until all the really bad stuff happened that I did not want to happen. But for the most part, 98% happy in that book. Now, a book that made me sad would be book two in the Outlander series, and that's a Dragonfly and Amber. And that's because you start that book from page one, and you know something terrible happened already, and you just don't know how it happened, like what led to it happening. So you're just reading this whole book, waiting for the bad thing to happen, and then the bad thing happens, and you're like, oh, well, I knew it was going to happen. Why am I still upset? Anyway, yeah. Book one, happy. Book two, miserable. And that was the opposite books tag! Yay! This is really interesting to do laying down. I probably look like I weigh 7,852 pounds. But you know what? I'm laying down. To do this tag, although you by no means have to do it laying down. This was just me being stupid. I tag Alyssa over at Books and Cats. Mel over at That Girl Bookworm, and I would also like to tag Drums of Autumn because I think she's super dope. If you liked this weird, mostly my face video, um, that's cool. You can hit that subscribe button and you'll actually get more of my face videos, but not laying down, probably. Who knows? I, I do. I'm not going to do this again. Not for a while, at least. Not without reason, either. 
And then just so everybody knows, next week I will be gone and out of town, so there will not be a video. I keep, I keep doing this. This isn't supposed to happen. So basically, yeah, if this kind of video didn't piss you off, you should totally subscribe. And maybe you'll get more content that won't piss you off. Um, if you liked this, like it literally by clicking that like button because it does me a favor. It lets me know what kind of crap I do that people like versus what kind of crap I do and people don't like, which is probably most of the things. I'm going to go now and edit this. Okay, bye. Love you. Make good choices.